Hey y'all, it's been a while since I've made a video about Bitcoin Cash, but a couple things have happened that caused me to want to talk about it. First of all is the censorship. Just yesterday I had three comments on three different channels about Bitcoin Cash, and they were all censored by YouTube. So over many months now, I haven't had any censorship on comments on YouTube. And yet, they still seem to be targeting Bitcoin Cash specifically as a topic which needs to be censored. So, those in power fear Bitcoin Cash. So, that's great about it. Uh, second point is that I recently had to download Venmo to accept payments um, from people of perhaps more Gen Z type orientation or just... A lot of people use Venmo, it's a very popular payment app and easily integrated with uh, the banking system and all sorts of stuff. And so I downloaded Venmo and it was really easy to get payments, it was really easy to connect with my bank account. And then I saw that it has crypto on it. So I checked out crypto on Venmo and it has four cryptocurrencies that it supports. Bitcoin, BTC, ETH, Litecoin and Bitcoin Cash. So basically, the four biggest cryptocurrencies that are actually used as cryptocurrencies are all accepted by Venmo. And at the time on the list, Bitcoin Cash and Litecoin were kind of duking it out really close in market cap. And the way they had them listed was by, by like market cap size. And Litecoin was maybe just uh, several million dollars ahead of Bitcoin Cash in market cap. And today, Bitcoin Cash is ahead of Litecoin and market cap. So they were both competing for the number three spot of the biggest cryptocurrencies used, as acknowledged by payment apps like uh, Venmo. BitPay is similar, has those four as the top four, and I'm sure there's others that, that do as well. And so Bitcoin Cash has moved into the number three position. So. Now, with uh, it's still very close to Litecoin, and I imagine that they'll go back and forth because there's a lot of people who buy into Litecoin for some reason. I don't fully understand, but I think the reason is that compared to Bitcoin and Ethereum, it is relatively cheap and fast, and it doesn't have the risk that uh, being on the same hash sort of algorithm or whatever that Bitcoin Cash is, so it has a different kind of, um, it's not competing with Bitcoin in that sense, and some people think there's a risk for Bitcoin Cash in relation to that, but there's also a huge positive to that because the Bitcoin network is arguably the most secure computer network in the world because of all of the, the computing power and the decentralized nature of it and everything, and so Bitcoin Cash shares in that quality by being a part of that even though it's a minority part of that um, there is a there's a huge potential benefit of that as well so I guess in that sense there's some argument for why some people like Litecoin though personally uh, I don't see any real uh, unique aspect of it that would cause me to want to buy it so Basically, the point being that Bitcoin Cash has moved up into the number three spot of the cryptocurrencies that are actually usable. And then, so if you really want to look at like you, cryptocurrencies with utility as a currency, obviously Ethereum and Bitcoin Core, BTC, don't have that utility because there's so much friction. Every single transaction costs like a dollar or several dollars to make, which is absurd for any kind of currency. Uh, other than gold, really, and gold is a failed currency. Gold is money, but it's a failed currency. But no one wants to spend a dollar as a transaction fee for every transaction they make. It's it's just it's a non-starter for a currency. It only is feasible for people who are making really big transactions, where that one dollar then becomes a, a rounding error, essentially. So. Then the third point is the price of Bitcoin Cash. I had said in a while a while ago in a video, I think it was a video where like the sun was behind my head and it was it must have been last year and after all of the drama with Coinflex and Roger Ver and then it went down to like a hundred 
and um, at one point the um, blanking on his name, but uh, the dude from the Bitcoin Cash podcast said that that was he thought that was the best video about the whole thing, which that was a nice comment to make. But anyways, one of the things that I said in that is that um, it's probably going to stay in that range, like. And I think it by then it had come up to around like 140, 150-ish. And then what seems to have happened is that a lot of that was due to CoinFlex um, liquidating Roger Ver's stake as a result of CoinFlex's mismanagement of their whole platform and, and all of that. And um, then it took some time for Roger to get back into a position in Bitcoin Cash. And then after that, it seemed to stabilize closer to 200. But what the, the point I had made in the video is that it's probably going to stay pretty stable until the banks start failing again. And then so we had one more bank failing recently, the, some bank in New York. And that coincided with... Bitcoin Cash then getting all the way up to like 290, 280, 290 or something. So breaking a, breaking a resistance level. And now it's come back to like 260, 270, 280. So it's got a new kind of stable region. and um, So that seems to be um, the, the, a very positive trend for Bitcoin Cash. Having found a, a solid bottom, luckily... Um, I personally got cut a several tra times trying to catch the falling knife and um, made some poor choices in relation to that. Uh, yet, Elodium, which is the only sovereign state nation country in the world that has adopted Bitcoin Cash as a reserve, was able to profit greatly from... Uh, from that whole episode because it was able to make its most significant purchases right around $100 per Bitcoin Cash. So, so Elodium is in a, in a good position in relation to, uh, in relation to Bitcoin Cash and just um, having benefited from, from all of that volatility. And so I guess that's the uh, I guess the that's the last one. Well, one other point is that uh, the Bitcoin.com channel is now having some more positive signs as well. They're still f focusing on the like an ETH and Ethereum token that they're like talking about all the time. But now they have a, um, a debit card they're launching. For some reason, they're naming the debit card after the Ethereum token that they created, as opposed to after their platform domain, their brand. I think that's a big error. Um, but it's good news, regardless, that uh, that they're launching a card. And they're back to making kind of regular news videos and filling that void, which is good for that brand. And there's, uh, there's positive potential developments where it could once again come into the fore as being kind of the biggest brand ambassador, really, of Bitcoin Cash. Although it's not just focused on Bitcoin Cash, it's focused on all the cryptos that work, plus Verse as well, an Ethereum token. So that's about all for now, and um, I have yet to buy Bitcoin Cash on Venmo, because when I actually tried to um, it, I, to actually receive a transfer, they required more KYC things than I wanted to do at the time, and even to be able to buy it, they wanted like a social security number. Uh, so that's not really ideal compared to something like the Bitcoin.com wallet where you don't need to put in any information. But with how well Venmo is integrated into the rest of uh, like all sorts of people using it and how seamless it is to, to transfer with fiat and everything, I might end up going through those steps and make a very easy on-off platform for Bitcoin Cash. So if I do, I might make a video about that. But that's about all for now. And um, that's all.